What if I told you there was an ancient mystery, an ancient story once again being replayed in modern times? We are all familiar with the story of the Tower of Babel, a story of a pagan world coming together as a single unit, an entire society trying to achieve equality with God. And what was their method? To literally build a tower that would ascend into heaven, that would ascend into the realm of celestial beings. The craziest thought is that the very thing they were trying to do would have been achieved if God hadn't intervened. And good thing he did. God destroyed the tower and cast confusion into the people. What a crazy thing to say that they would have achieved their goal. But I didn't say it. God did. In Genesis chapter 11, it says this. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. And the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. The Lord, Jehovah, the God of the universe, said nothing would be impossible for them. This indicates that the very thing they had set out to do, to build a tower into heaven, would have been achieved. How? This seems impossible. How would a people group build a tower that would reach to the outer realms of the universe, thousands of light years away, into a place that we call heaven? This is ridiculous and impossible. Therefore, I would suggest another means of extending their tower into heaven. You see, many Christian intellects with doctorate degrees in theology and even molecular and particle physics would suggest that there are gateways, or for you sci-fi junkies, portals, just beyond the naked eye, placed at strategic locations around the world in which the celestial realm would enter and leave from. Take another portion of scripture, for example. In Genesis 28, Jacob was given a vision in which we today refer to as Jacob's ladder. In this vision, he saw a stairway or ladder resting on earth with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. How was this possible? How was Jacob able to see heaven and earth and a stairway extending to both at the same moment? Let me give you another example. Whenever you're in a time of need and you pray, Lord, send down your angels. Let them protect me. Where is the angel or the angels coming from? From the outer edges of the universe or wherever the spirit realm lies? If he was traveling at the speed of light, it would literally take that angel millions of years to get to you. You're long gone. Once again, what a ridiculous thought. Wouldn't it make more sense? If these spirit beings were simply able to pass through some sort of dimensional barrier, through a, a gateway, to immediately be able to assist you. Is that what Jacob was seeing? Was he seeing one of the gateways into heaven in which angels were ascending and descending? The same type of gateway the pagans in the story of the Tower of Babel were trying to get to? It's interesting to note what Jacob said after his encounter there with the supernatural realm. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. What does all this have to do with today? The here and the now. Someone once said, history has a funny way of repeating itself. Another man once said, the one thing we can learn from history is that we don't learn from history. And from studying history, you will quickly see that God, he works in cycles. He works in patterns. If you want to get on what God is doing, then you've got to find out how he operates. 
And Hebrew tells us that Jesus, God, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, what if I told you again today the ancient story of the Tower of Babel is being repeated? Isn't it interesting that people from all around the world have once again come together to build the largest machine that man has ever constructed? They say it's for the purpose of discovering the God particle, this mystery particle that essentially holds the entire universe together and if found would explain our very existence. I think it's pretty interesting that I have made the discovery of a lifetime. I have figured out what the God particle is. I have figured out what holds the entire universe together. And it talks about it in Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. He, Jesus, is before all things, and in him all things hold together. This insane machine, it's called CERN, the Large Hedron Collider, the Tower of Babel, the whole world came together to work on it. Over 100 nationalities have come together to work at CERN, the Large Hedron Collider. Thousands upon thousands of people, even mortal enemies of each other. Physicists from India and Pakistan are working together. From Russia and Georgia, working together. Even physicists from Iran and Israel are working together. The people at the Tower of Babel's goal was to reach a portal or a gateway into the sky into another dimension where God dwells. Sergio Bertolucci, director for research and scientific computing at CERN, said this, the Large Hedron Collider could open a doorway to an extra dimension and out of this door might come something or we might send something through it. The new tower, the largest machine that man has ever created is again trying to reach into other dimensions. Aurelien Barreau, a French particle physicist at CERN, said this, The idea of multiple universes is more than a fantastic invention and deserves to be taken seriously. The Daily Mail recently had an article that read, Will the Large Hadron Collider find a parallel universe? Well, we already know that this world is but a shadow of a larger reality. The article continues by saying, Particle Smasher could become a gateway to alternate realities, say scientists. There's that word, gateway, once again. Is all this a mere coincidence? Are the startling parallels between these two stories just a matter of chance? Or are the powers of the demonic realm actively at work right now? And if this is more than just a coincidence, and history does decide to repeat itself, let's not forget how it ended for the people at the Tower of Babel, who were also trying to play God. Judgment came. Judgment came from the true and living God, the just and good God, the God that holds all things together, the God of the Bible. Judgment came and cast confusion into the people of all the earth. But what do I know? I challenge you to be like the Bereans that are spoken about in the Bible in the book of Acts chapter 17. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. And as a result, many of them believed.